this video, I'll be utilizing a free Formula One model car that I got from Matt's Actually Useful Models on Sketchfab. Thanks, Matt. Cool. To show you guys why you should chill on your texturing. You know? Chill, man. Welcome to Technical. My name is Rasmus. I'm an art director and designer with 20 years of professional games development experience. And I'm on a mission to inspire and empower designers, makers, and creators. Design the future. Let's go. So in Blender, the first thing I'm going to do is press 5 on the numpad to flatten the perspective and throw that little screen grab into Photoshop real quick because I plan on simply planar mapping it, uh, the, 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 the texture onto the model like this. And I'm stealing some Technovo themed artwork, logo types and stuff like that I have from my, my little semi-corporate archive. And I'm simply pasting that into the to the file. You can see here, I'm already starting to get an idea of what I want. And I'm painting a, a blue strip um, along the line of that uh, Aston Martin yellow there we have in the original texture map. And the idea is to, I mean, the, the, the file will stay quite blocky in terms of color, but the idea is to just ensure and test that I have a good sense, sense of how the texture is going to display on the model. So you can see I'm bending my logo type here to fit the, the side of the car. And then I have this idea of, of a big uh, logo type on the, on the top air intake up there behind the driver. I'm taking all these different parts and I'm as assembling them together. Joining them, I think, is the right terminology. Attaching my little material here. You can see I'm fumbling my way. And projecting it from the camera view. And you can see on the Technovo logo type there on the side that it fits the car reasonably well. Of course, the F1 car has a super dynamic shape. And everything gets a little warped here and there. And that's okay. I know I want this logo type here on the nose as well. So I'm making part of the texture with the with just the blue back blue background. And you can see I'm taking the big T in there and warping it to fit the shapes of the vehicle. I'm exploring a quick idea of some outline. This looks a little bit too easy to read, so I'm moving it back to make it a little bit more abstract, like a zigzag Adidas stripe or something. And you can see I'm cutting off the nose. Again, plan on projecting it from, from above on the nose so I can get that logo type on there. And of course, because it's clean colors, you can't see the cut of the maps uh, as long as it's it remains blue on blue. So I can allow myself to be really sloppy with the application to simply explore the layout and really get ideas in 3D as I move the, the mapping around. Here I want a black Technovo on the, on the wing there. And I'm simply positioning it really roughly like this. And squashing the bit there where the blue comes in. So it's just a pure black wing. Playing a bit with a bit of color there or a bit, a bit of a fade. A bit of a size and you can see I'm back and forth between mapping and Photoshop to simply get a rough sort of layout that I that I think works for the for what I want to do. And here I'm warping the, the local type to fit the curves of the car or the, the bodywork and the aerodynamic complicated shapes. You can see the the line there I'm aligning that with the What's that security brace called? I forget. So that some lines of that logo type fits with the, the lines of the of the car. And it's important to have that be half abstract, half recognizable. Here I'm just disassembling the wheel to figure out what the hell is going on there. Reapplying some of these uh, extra sponsors. 
of the original model. Coming back to the wheels, giving them the my little quick material. Can't help but explore if I want that round logo type to be there, but quickly decide that I want a blocky full color instead. Because I want it to be really timeless and really clean. I mean, it ends up being really clean, so maybe too clean, but you know, artists were always second guessing ourselves. Of course, the classic idea of a, a white and a blue wheel there, you know, having the front wheel set be different. But that's really it. So what's important for me to um, to let you know here is that how roughly I approach this, right? Planner mapping, simply from a camera view, flatten the perspective on the five on the numpad and into Photoshop or your preferred texture uh, generator. Play around with the layout there, apply it real quick. And then back and forth a few times to make sure that you have a good sense of layout and elements. Uh, and of course, as long as you're working in a model that is as clean as this one, you know, no problem. Obviously, if it's panels and all that, it gets a lot more complicated. But what I'm arguing for here and what I'm urging you to do is to start roughly, start simply. Don't do all that unwrap stuff. Don't do all that super complicated chaotic mapping which means that your text map becomes completely unusable in photoshop and everything becomes very very bogged down in process and very heavy-handed and you know my tastes I, I i don't have the patience for it but what i'm trying to show you here is maybe you don't have to have the patience for it either maybe you can just let go go a little crazy have some fun and you'll find you'll spend your time exploring layouts and composition rather than mechanics of uh, texture mapping and that's it for today. If you want to see some more uh, process videos, I have some here, or you can give me a follow if you're curious to more process and uh, design videos. Thanks.